Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop, but many of you know me as Wise Courtship because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer, where we come together to read over God's Word, to pray for your concerns, and also give you some encouragement as you go out of the door, okay? <laughs> so I want to greet each and every one of you and make sure that you are sharing this broadcast by touching right down there. Yeah, you can share this on Twitch, Twitter. Um, we are also on Facebook, so you can share with all of your followers by putting it on your timeline, or you can start a watch party or invite individual people into the broadcast, and you can invite by touching down there on Periscope, where you would share with all your followers, put it on Facebook, or tweet it out, okay? And um, i like to thank everyone who's watching via my website, which is www.wisecourtship.com, and um, let me see. Otherwise, oh, and for those who are going to be watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, honey. Ring the little bell so you'll know every time I upload a new video. And thank you for all of you who are listening to me via my podcast, especially the Wise Courtship Devotional, which is on every podcast platform that you can think of. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So good to see each and every one of you on today. And I know that we're getting closer and closer to the holiday. So sometimes, you know, when that happens, we all get busy with what we're doing here. But I do come on every Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I say that Eastern Standard Time because many of you are watching me all around the world, especially the wise courtship people. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in and supporting me each and every time I come on to any of these platforms. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get into what I'm going to be reading on today. Let's see. I want to read Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. And I'm going to read the New International Version. I'm going to read that version. And it is quite a bit that I'm going to read. So I'm going to go ahead and get started as um, many of you come on to the broadcast. So starting with um, verse 17, Ephesians 4, um, 17 through 32, I'm going to read. And um, I'm reading the New International Version. <clears throat> so it reads this way. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. 
That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, and it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Okay, and so I read um, Ephesians 4, I read 17 through 32. And uh, let me take some time now to greet you. I'm going to be focusing on uh, verse 26. Good to see you, Tracy. Good afternoon to you. Guys, make sure you go ahead and share this broadcast so that someone will be blessed by it. I'm going to focus on verse uh, 26, Ephesians 4, 26, which reads this way. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Mm. And so today we're going to talk about, um, just briefly, why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? You know, um, wow, we are dealing with a lot of angry people um, in 2020. Okay. <laughs> We've always dealt with angry people, but I, I mean, as things are really uh, going to the boiling point with many people, and very often we lash out at folks when we're angry, and, and sometimes they have nothing to do with the root of our anger, or if they do have something to do with it, we're not great at articulating how we feel during the time that we are angry. And so we see in this scripture, well, in this whole passage, this whole passage of scripture, guys, this whole passage is about instructions for Christian living, because we say we live in a Christian Christian country for those who are watching me all over the world. The U.S. says we're a Christian country, but sometimes when we do things, we don't really act like we Christians. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we do things, we act anything but. And let me just say, nobody is perfect. Can I get that in the chat box saying nobody is perfect? Thank you, Replay viewers, for watching. Give me a hashtag, Replay Baby, to let me know that you are watching via the replay. Um, nobody is perfect. None of us. I'm not perfect. Nobody's is perfect. I don't care if you think this person is perfect. Nobody is perfect. And so I don't think we ought to hold people up to a standard of perfection. But what I am here saying is that we all will make mistakes. You know, there's times that we will get angry and we will go too far and we really shouldn't do that. You might do it once, twice, even thrice, okay? <laughs> but when you make a lifestyle of it, you got to watch this. You got to watch it. Because the only person that you really are messing up in your anger is yourself. Is yourself. And it's such a terrible, terrible testament to who you say you are when you have anger on you. So the Bible talks about this. It, and I'm not going to go into everything verse by verse because instead what I'm going to do is talk about a little bit about the anger and give some solutions. I believe the anger is basically coming from the fact that we will not face what is going on in our lives. That's right. Nobody is perfect. 
Nobody's perfect. We have some things. So sometimes we're going to be angry. The Bible says we can be angry. That's a human emotion. Everybody, you know, to be angry, sad, you know, to be happy. Those are part of our human emotions. So you can be angry because that's part of your emotion. That's a way to let off stress. That's the way to 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 vent um frustrations however you cannot teeter over into the realm of sinning taking your anger out on other people being slanderous being abusive whether it's verbal or emotional or physical you know the, to come up with plots and schemes behind your anger to say something that you know you should not say and so the bible is very very clear about we can be angry but we ought not sin we ought not sin. And unfortunately, for those of us who hold on to the anger over and over, because sometimes some of us want to, you know, not cross over into the sinning part, so we hold it in. And for those of us who hold it in, we never talk about it. Or for those of us who blurt it out to everybody and hurt everyone in its path, we have to learn how to control that anger a little bit better. We have to learn how to manage it a little bit better. And I know what it's like to be angry. Don't, don't let the smile fool you, honey. The smile is all about the joy that God has given me on the inside. So I can't help but smile because I am joyful. Okay. I'm not always happy. I'm not always in the season of happiness. There's sometimes I'm in the season of sorrow. Sometimes I'm in the season of grief, but I always have joy. Okay. Okay. And let me tell you, the way you get the joy is by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to ask God to come into your life. Okay. You got to admit that you're a sinner. You got to ask God to come in your life. And you got to be uh, not afraid to declare it to everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross for your sins. If you're able to do that, you are saved. And as you read God's word and as you mature as a Christian, you will be able to develop the joy because that is a fruit of the spirit. That when you say, we say fruit of the spirit, that's what you're going to bear as a person who has God inside of you, you are going to start exemplifying or portraying yourself as a Christian. And we know it because of certain behavior characteristics and joy is one of them. Okay. One of many, but let's get back to this anger thing. One of the reasons why and I'm going to, I'm going to say some things that you can jot down, that you could talk about, you could pray about. That's why I need for you to share it. Because, you know, very often you could put a generic post up. I said this in my description. You could put a generic post up on Facebook, honey. You could say, it's a nice day. <laughs> and somebody will light up your comment section. What do you mean it's a nice day? How do you know it's a nice day? Because they have anger festering in themselves. And so number one, I want to say is that in order to deal with the anger that you have in your life is one, you got to admit the initial hurt. I'm helping somebody today. That's why you need to share. You need to admit the initial hurt because very often I remember, you know, growing up and, you know, mom or, or auntie or somebody would be mad about something. And while they're washing the pots, they upset saying you ain't washed the dishes and you didn't do this. And they are going off and off, but they really mad because you, you acted up in school. Oh, y'all not going to help me on today. And we have to be honest and admit the initial hurt. You cannot dance around what hurt you. You have to put on grown people's underwear and say, you know what? When you did X, Y, Z, that hurt me. That made me upset. That angered me because, okay, we have to learn how to grow up and believe just because you over 21 does not mean that you're mature enough. Oh, hello does not mean you're mature enough to be able to express why you are angry and why you why you are hurt and verbalize it. I know some 60-year-old people who still can't do it. And sometimes we don't want to uh, admit the initial hurt because once we say it out loud, we realize it don't mean nothing. I don't want you living next door to me because I just don't like colored people. And if you say it out loud and be and be honest and calm down, you may realize that that's real dumb. Okay. Y'all not going to help me on today. Let's go to number two. Number two is you need to ask God to help you reconcile all of these steps. You need God's help and you need to reconcile within yourself and with the other person. Sometimes you can go to the other person and you can reconcile the situation. They're reasonable. You're reasonable. You can reconcile it. Sometimes you go before the person to reconcile and they will not admit what they did. They could be wrong as two left shoes, 
but they're not going to admit it. They're not going to ever admit it. They're going to die and go to their grave and not admit it. And you have to still reconcile. You can't reconcile with them, but you have to reconcile with yourself and you have to reconcile with God. And so we have to learn how to do that. Sometimes we make a stupid decision. It was a dumb one. You can't blame anybody else but yourself. Yes, I said, yo, you can't blame anybody else but yourself. And you have to sit your little hips down and say, you know what? That was a dumb mistake. That was a dumb move. I was real dumb when I did that, but I'm not a dumb person. I'm going to do better. I'm going to learn better. I'm going to act better. Oh my gosh. Because if you don't do that, then you're mad at everybody else who do it right. You're mad at everybody else who may have stepped through that hoop. What made you fall didn't trip them up. And if you're really bad, you may try to trip them up yourself. Hello? Is anybody there? I'm going to keep going because I can't even stay here but so long because we only got for so much time. But you have to ask God to help you reconcile. Reconcile with yourself. Reconcile with the person who hurt you. Reconcile with God. And if some of those ones you can't reconcile with, you can always reconcile with yourself. You can always reconcile with God. But you can't always reconcile with the other person. And you have to accept that if that happens. Number three is grieve. Whatever's getting you upset, what you up, go ahead and get angry. Go ahead and cry. Go ahead and throw something that's not going to hurt anybody and nobody's in the room. Go ahead and beat up your pillow. Go ahead and exercise. Go ahead and scream. Whatever it is you need to do, grieve and deal with it. Deal with the hurt. Deal with the pain. Don't try to shove it down anywhere because the more you shove it down, the more we're going to see it on Facebook. And we tired of looking at that on Facebook, okay? <laughs> We tired of hearing all of that on Facebook, child. You trying to get your little free counseling in. We tired of that. Grieve about it. Tell God all about it. Get on your knees and tell him all about it. Oh, my goodness. Number four, you got to move on. Yeah, I know today is different, but this is what was put on my spirit. And I know when I put it out there, I'm going to get inboxes. I'm going to get emails. I'm going to get comments and say, you spoke to me. And if I spoke to you, say, that's me in the chat box. That's me. We've got to learn to move on. See, some of y'all don't get offended when somebody steps on your toe. Some some of y'all stuck there. Y'all stuck there. Somebody step on your toe. You mean that you meant to do that? And I can't believe. And some of us don't get upset because somebody came in the room dressed real nice. Some of us are more mature than that, but some of y'all stuck on that. You stuck on it. Because you ate one or two more Twinkies than you should have, and now you mad because she got a nice shape. Okay. See, I'm just too honest for to be real. I see you guys watching me via the uh, my um, website. Thank you so much for tuning in. And so we have to learn how to move on from stuff. But sometimes it's something so horrific. Someone raped us. Someone killed our family member. Someone uh, um, um, uh, tied us up, gagged us, kept us for two, two weeks. Oh, my gosh. Someone threw acid on us. Sometimes it's so horrific, it's so hard, hard, and it's so shameful, but you still have to work through it, and you still have to get to the point that you move on, because if you don't, it's going to eat you up alive. And so I say, dear ones, you got to move on. Somebody put move on in the chat box. Oh, my God. Let me see what y'all saying in this chat box. Thank you so much for sharing. Good to see you. Good to see you, Lakeisha. Good to see you. If I'm saying something good, you say you talking good in the chat box. Number five, here we go. Create great memories with those you love. All of those steps are things that you can do quietly and privately, or you can include the person who wronged you. But then there's an action step that many people don't take because they're, so, they're still festering over something that hurt them. But if you can get down to number five, Boy, you have really overcome a situation. And that is to create great memories with those who love you. You're not going to be able to create great memories with everybody. Just face it. Everybody's not going to like you. Huh? Everybody is not going to like you. I walked into a room one time and I said half of them hated me and half of them loved me and they didn't, none of them knew me. <laughs> You're not going to look. You ain't going to make everybody love you. 
Don't even try to do that. But for the ones who do love you, your family members, your friends. Some of y'all say, well, I don't have no family that love me. Then get some friends. You only need one, one or two. That would be real nice. You don't need a whole bunch of them. And make great memories with them. Go to the park. Go to the movies. Go to the beach. Yes, indeed. Good to see you, darling. Good to see you. I got so many spiritual children. How are you, sweetheart? Good to see you. Uh, that is uh, uh, Did Zero on Twitch. Good to see you, darling. Get people in your life. That's right. Move on. Get people in your life that are going to build you up, pour into you, make you laugh. If we can't have a laugh together, you're not my friend. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And make sure you share it, okay, darling? <laughs> That's right. Go to the park. Eat a sandwich. Exactly. I forgot to put it. Eat a sandwich. Go to the park. Do whatever. Get your hair did. <laughs> That's done for, for those who don't understand Ebonics, okay? <laughs> Make great memories with people who love you, who want to be around you. It's so, so important. Don't get caught up in anger. Because after a while, people are going to be looking at you like, why are you so angry? Why are you so bitter? And it's so sad to see people get old and they're angry and it's been festering for 35 years and you say well what in the world happened well well i don't know exactly but i know she that's sad somebody put in this chat box that's sad don't let that be you don't let that be you be known as the person with the biggest smile the person who can light up a room the person who brings the joy and the happiness and the understanding We've got to pray, and we're getting ready to pray in a moment, but we definitely got to pray for our nation because there is a lot of anger there. And the anger comes from an initial hurt that people are not willing to face. It could be a racial hurt. It could be a narrative that you are believing that's just not true, but you want to hold on to it. You want to fast. And you know, it's amazing. It's amazing. I really don't have enemies, but I do have some people who get angry with me. And I, you know, maybe because I tell the truth or maybe because I, I didn't go to the, uh, to the, um, the backyard barbecue when I really just wanted to stay home and read a book. That's my prerogative. That's my life. I get to decide what I want to do with my life. But people get mad at you over so much stuff. People have asked me to help them and I help them and then they get mad. I had to ask my mother about that one. And she said they shamed that they had to ask for help. And so they visit that anger instead of on themselves to figure out why they got in the predicament. But they're going to get mad at you because you're the one who's helping them. Oh, my gosh. We've got to deal with this anger. We've got to deal with the problems that we have in our lives. we got to face them head on and go to God in prayer about what is illing us in our lives. And every time you put, I want you to hear this. Go ahead and share this. I want you to hear this. Every time you put your trust in man, every time you put your trust in yourself, every time you put your trust in a system, in the government, even sometimes in the church, when you put your trust in anything else other than God, you will be let down. Oh, mama will let you down. Yes, your mother will let you down. She may be faithful in everything, but when you really needed her, she may be dead and gone. And now you're mad because she died. You're not even thinking about the fact that she may be in a better place. <laughs> you're mad at God. You're mad at everybody. You're mad. Listen, whenever you put your faith in anybody else but God, you're going to be let down. Why not put your faith and trust in God? He cannot fail. Now, he may not do what you want him to do. And you may be mad about that. But when you really have faith in God, when you really trust him, you know that he has your best at heart. And he's going to do what's best for you in the end. You may think you know what's best for you, but you don't know. I know you say, I lived 70 years. I don't know you don't know. You don't know what's best for you because you thought that man was best for you at 18. And by the time you was 38, you said, oh, God, 
That wasn't best. And then you thought the second one was good for you. Mm. And the third one. Huh? But when you put your trust in God, you won't be messing up like that. And you won't be sitting someplace with your lips tooted up because you know that, listen, every step and people be like, oh man, they always seem to win. You always seem to win because you put your hand in God, not because you're so smart and not because you're so beautiful or highly degreed. You are successful because you put your trust in God and let him uh, order your steps. Oh my gosh. Good to see you. Good to see you on today. And so now we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We talked about on today, why are you so angry? And I pray, I pray that you get the anger under control. You get all of the hurt out so that you can enjoy this life abundantly. That's why Christ came. He came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Don't miss it. Don't live a hell here and then die and go to hell. Listen, live a heaven here and live a better heaven when you live, when you get out of here. So let's go before the Lord in prayer if you don't mind. And uh, when I put my glasses on, we're going. Good to see you, Seema. Good to see you. Um, good to see you on today. Go ahead and um, when I put my glasses on, you can put your prayer request up at that time. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up and we magnify you, recognizing that you want the one true God and beside you, there is none other, knowing that you have what's best for us. Forgive us, oh God, for being angry. Forgive us for not having the emotion of anger, but acting out on the anger doing things that we know we shouldn't do, saying things that we know we shouldn't. We recognize you've given us anger as one of our emotions, but forgive us if we've abused it, if we've taken it the next step where we've hurt others, where we've carried malice all of this time. Forgive us, oh God. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for all of the encouragement you have in your word. We thank you for the instructions on how to live our daily lives. We thank you for our friends and our family and, and our spouses. We thank you for keeping us healthy and strong. And God, for those who have lost loved ones, we thank you for being a comfort. We thank you for being with us and helping us each and every day uh, to, to deal with the grief surrounding us with people who love us and the calls and the uh, prayers. God, we're so grateful. God, we thank you so much for um, keeping us. And we pray now for those who are, they're suffering. They're suffering so horribly. Go ahead and put your prayer request up this time. God, we're praying for those who don't have enough food to eat. We're praying for those who have lost shelter or need shelter. We're praying for those who have lost jobs uh, and need employment. God, we pray for them that you will provide a means of uh, work and income for them. God, we pray uh, for those who may be sick right now, especially battling uh, COVID-19. God, I pray for my son, uh, Sean, who's ill at this moment. Uh, we pray healing over him in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for healing my son, Christian, who was ill, oh God. I just pray, oh God, for those who are hospitalized that have reached out to me about the hospitalization. God, we pray for Judy's son as he's going through uh, rounds of chemotherapy, God. Uh, we pray in healing over his body. God, we pray for every mother on this broadcast. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up uh, if you do have one at this time. We pray for every mother. We pray for every father on this broadcast. God, we pray for uh, every business owner, all of the small businesses, medium-sized businesses, oh God, that are struggling. God, touch them and help them. Give them witty ideas, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for... Um, we pray for all of uh, our children who are in school or who are learning online, all of the high schoolers and college students, oh God, some of them are away and on campuses, some of them are traveling back, uh, some of them are studying from home, God, we just pray, God, you put your loving arms around them, open up their minds so that they will be able to understand what it is that they're learning. All of our frontline workers, God, protect them, our nurses, our doctors, bus drivers and, and people who work in stores who are putting themselves on the line during this pandemic. We pray for our brothers and sisters in every country all around the world. Many of you are watching me even today on various platforms. We pray for you in this pandemic that God will keep you safe 
O oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for um, the United States of America, all of this separation, all of this anger, all of this hostility. God, we pray that we will get wisdom to see what it is that gets us so angry. And God, open up our eyes and let us know and, uh, that you are our source. We don't have to scramble. We don't have to fight. We don't have to fuss. You are our source. And if we need anything, we ought to come to you and ask. And God, you will hear our prayers. And God, we just pray for every world leader, that you give them wisdom, that you give them compassion for your people, letting them know that you they, they are your servant and that they will be responsible for how they treat your people. And now, God, we pray for those who may have been too ashamed to put their prayer request up. Maybe it was too private for anyone to see. God, you know all about it. You know everything that they stand in the need of. God, we touch and agree right now that you will bless and that you will come through in the way that you see fit because we know your answer, whether it's yes, no, or wait a minute, is going to be better than anything we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> So it's so good to see you guys on today. And I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement before we go out of uh, the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, we, our timing is not too bad. So, you know, I just want to say that we are in, oh my gosh, are we not in some turbulent times? I'm telling you, it is just unbelievable. Thank you so much. It is unbelievable um, what's going on. Um, but the Bible told us that, you know, things would get worse before they even get better. But I tell you, there's still joy in the journey. There is still joy in the journey. There's so many things that that's why you want to get this anger thing under control. Because if you get tripped up on one step, you're never going to make it to step two, three, four, five, six. There's so many more steps for us to take and we cannot get tripped up on uh, one step or the other. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. And so um, I want to encourage you guys that, that you can still find joy. You may have to move out of your home because, you know, you couldn't pay the mortgage and you might lose the house. But guess what? You can still celebrate that all of you are still alive. And you may find out when you get to that apart apartment that it's so easy to pay. <laughs> it's so stress-free if you allow. How yourself, if you allow your mind to open up and to be grateful and to be thankful, I find that a lot of times when we're angry about stuff, if we go back and start giving God thanks for what he has done, then we start forgetting about what we might even be angry about. We might say, we might say it's silly. You know, I find that the people who seem like they should show enough be angry about something, I mean, something that's really unjust or something that was really inhumane or something that was really unpredictable or horrific, it seems like those people are much more grateful than those who said, I couldn't get the seat I wanted. <laughs> and I can't believe you looked at me a certain way. So we have got to be people who are uh, joyous people, people who find the good in every situation. That's right. Blessings come our way as long as we are ready to receive it. And you can't receive it like this tense and with your hands closed and with your mouth tooted out. You got to be like this, always willing to give and always willing to learn and always willing to receive and always willing to bless other people. And so this week, if I was going to give any homework, Let's make each person, let's be focused on making somebody else's life a little better because we all, there's not one person on this broadcast live, on the replay, or on any other platform that you're watching me on right now. There's not one person who's not going through something because 2020 has really been a rough ride, right? 2020 has been a really rough ride. And so if I was to give any homework assignment, I would say try to make someone's life a little better, a little brighter, because we all can use it. We all can use a call. We all can use a text. We all can use a I love you. We all can use a smile, a silly joke. I mean, you know, let's spread the love and let's go out with, tw let 2020 go out with more love and more unity. Why are you so angry? 
Maybe because you haven't counted your blessings because God is still blessing every day. And if you're so angry, you'll miss it. You'll miss the fact that all these blessings you have, one thing didn't go your way and you're focusing on that. Well, dear ones, I've got to go and I know you do too. But listen, you can visit me on the web which is www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere. It's Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in his, on his throne. He's still in control. And until Jesus comes back, we've got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Each and every one of you, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Mm -hmm.